the Anycubic Photon Ultra 3D Resin Printer. Let's give it a review. Hey guys, it may have slipped your notice, but I've been lucky enough to be sent a prototype version of the new Photon Ultra, a DLP printer which is the product of a collaboration between Anycubic and Texas Instruments. You might not have spotted my subtle hints as I've been pretty easy going about the whole thing. When the box arrived, I felt it looked small, and as I unwrapped it, it had a genuine Baby Yoda feel about it, and I started describing it to myself as dinky. I was mesmerized by this checker patterned build plate, and noticed the tool marks where the plate had obviously been ground perfectly flat. I wondered the purpose of this patterning, but judging by how well prints stick to it, I think the answer is obvious. The next surprise was this resin tray. It's plastic. Yes, yes, it's definitely any cubic, but the tray is plastic. However, it's beautifully light and yet clearly robust, so it's up to the job. Unfortunately, the plastic motif continues as we examine the base. Again, it's light and sturdy, but very plastic. Even the legs are molded into the base. The styling is very basic, but not unattractive. The USB port and power switch are on the right side. The power socket is to the rear, and there are vents all over. The front houses a very small display screen, and this has been the cause of many a swear word from me. Where we'd usually see an LCD screen, there's clear glass, and hiding below it is a projector, the heart of this new printer. The Ultra makes use of a single linear rail, which, in combination with all the plastic, makes cost cutting a little obvious. However, where the Z pillar meets the base, everything is reassuringly metal for strength. And, before anyone asks, no, I haven't seen any Z wobble. The plate fixes to the Z arm with a single screw, and it sits securely with a purpose. It has four hex bolts that require loosening and tightening to achieve proper plate leveling, and that's the standard paper technique. The tray slides in without much clearance, so FEP scratches could happen. With the detachable lid in place, it looks a handsome unit. In use, the screen is clear, but genuinely too small. Okay, I'm 6 foot 5 and built like an elephant with a thyroid problem, but I don't struggle with other printers. Here, I had to use the very tip of my little finger. And even then, more often than not, my finger bridged two buttons, causing confusing results. However, I have reported this to Anycubic, and I'm confident this is a UI issue that can be easily resolved, so it should be far better on the finished product. Similarly, I had issues with the USB port. It's just a little loose, I think. Sometimes it doesn't recognize the stick, and one time a print failed with the error USB stick removed, when in truth it was still there. Again, I've reported this problem and knowing any cubic, that's the last we'll hear of it. So, I guess we'd better do some printing. Along with this printer, any cubic kindly sent me two bottles of their Craftsman resin. I suspect they realized I was going to be doing a lot of printing. Printers normally come with a test print, and unusually, the Ultra comes with a small Wolverine bust, which I was happy to try. In use, the printer was fairly quiet and relatively quick, certainly on par with monochrome printing speeds. It's always a relief when a test print works. It had stuck to the plate well, thanks to that checkerboard pattern, but it wasn't difficult to remove. The print cleaned up very well with IPA, and I was surprised how well the detail was popping through. The colour and the resin were growing on me, 
and the print astounded me. Just look at the chain around his neck. Unfortunately, that's where my printing success is stalled. The moment I tried to do my own prints, nothing worked. I'm not sure the resin was particularly heavy, but the print parted from the supports in all cases. I took a gamble and changed to frozen 4K grey. Sorry any cubic. And boy, was I pleased that I did. This is a ring design that I knocked up in a couple of minutes one afternoon. Okay, I'm lying. It's actually by the great jewellery artist Thomas Wittelsbeck, the founder of the ZBrush Jewellery Workshop I've spoken of in the past, and, if you like, one of my instructors in ZBrush. He kindly lent me this amazing piece a while ago, specifically to test printers on. So far, I've never found a printer that did it justice. But this time, look at this. It's amazing. Look at the quality. Hang on, that's the one I did on the Mars 3 Ultra 4K. No, this is the one from the Photon Ultra. I got my Ultras mixed up there. Genuinely, I've never before been able to see the quality of detail that's available in this amazing ring design. But here, it's just slapping me in the face. So, right now, I bet you're wondering what the resolution of this printer is. And when I tell you, you really won't like it. According to the literature I've had, it's 80 microns. Frankly, I rejected this completely and said as much to any cubic waffling on about how it was printing better than 35 micron printers that I've used. But it seems Anycubic was right, and I was trying to compare apples and oranges. This is a DLP printer, rather than the LCD types we're used to seeing. Now, DLPs are known for high precision printing, but they also usually come with a large price tag. So before hating all the plastic on this printer too much, just remember what a big deal this is. In fact, Anycubic's goal was to produce the world's first affordable, high-precision DLP. Anycubic are happy to state that the Ultra outperforms 2K and 4K monochromes. And that's because DLP and LCD are two different technologies. LCDs converge all their light onto a pixel, but this can cause shadows and slight blurring around the edges. DLPs, on the other hand, use a projector and micro mirrors to direct light to a pixel. As this is more precise, the pixel is sharp with no blurred edges. So when displaying thin sections, DLPs are much clearer than LCDs, and of course, detail is all about edges and corners and what have you. DLPs are generally longer lasting too. The projector inside the Ultra won't require maintenance for 20,000 hours. It also uses less energy in operation, so that's another plus in its favour. In terms of resins, it's possible to adjust the UV power of the Ultra, which opens up a variety of resin options. Anycubic recommend DLP resins for best results, but as you've seen, this printer is happily running on frozen 4K resin right now. You can also be certain that I'll be trying the Soriatek castable resin in the very near future. The Photon Ultra will be launched on Kickstarter on the 15th of September 2021, where it will be available at just $399 for the first 100 backers, and then $499 normal price. After Kickstarter, Photon Ultra's price on Amazon will be around $599, but of course this is just a guide price. It's kind of hard to call this a review when I know it's a prototype, but I also know it's 99% finished and the working demo model that I have here blows my socks off. It's small and it's plasticky, 
but that's to keep costs down as we move in a brave new direction. And I think it's obvious Anycubic's typical approach to quality is still present. I cannot begin to tell you how well it prints. It prints how I've imagined formlapse print, but it comes at a cost that is not too far out of reach for the average Joe. I genuinely think we are seeing a turning point here. I suspect other manufacturers are already planning their DLP projects because, well, this is the first. This is the pioneer. This is Anycubic breaking down doors and giving us all access to the toys normally reserved for the professionals. And from what I'm seeing here, it beats any 3D resin printer I've personally come across. And this is the Mark I. Frankly, it's hard to imagine how anyone could improve upon this, but you know some boffing will, because that's what happens. But right now, we have the Anycubic Photon Ultra. And I, for one, would be willing to sell my mother-in-law to buy one. It's small, it's quiet, it's efficient, but it's amazing. If this isn't the best budget printer in the world right now, I don't know what is. I'm off to give mine a hug. So that's it for this review, guys. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to drop me a line. So take care, and thanks for watching.